Hi, I'm John Beasley, and I create music. Well, remind me which instrument you play. I play piano. Tell me, like, one, one solo, a piano solo that you remember hearing that just sort of floored you. Well, I think the first one was probably the organist Jimmy Smith on a, on a record called The Midnight Special. From then, and then I really wanted to be Quincy. When I was about 14, I wanted to be Quincy Jones. <laughs> Walking in space, body heat. He's still my man. Tell me what it was like growing up in Louisiana where there's such a rich jazz history. Yeah, well, there's jazz, there's zydeco, there's blues, uh, you know, lots of rhythm influence, so uh, I felt really lucky that I was able to hear all this music coming up, and, and uh, all, all of it kind of pours out of me at some point, different times. So. so it's not just that you were drawn more to jazz, it's just that that's what you're doing right now? Music. I mean, basically, when you play jazz, you can play jazz on any rhythm at all. So, uh, you know, I love playing rock, and you know, beat, hip hop. You're an arranger and assumedly a, a writer as well, yeah. in addition to being an instrumentalist, right? Yes. So, I wonder if you could comment on the difference between like uh, composing a jazz tune versus um, versus a more traditional songwriting approach. Well. Um, I think the, the art of it all comes from the same place. I mean, you write a song and you write a song, whether it's, you know, on a jazz rhythm or off of a contemporary rhythm. The difference is that, um, actually for me, it's a little bit more of a challenge to write in a commercial mode because um, uh, you have certain parameters that you can say. You can't write crazy harmony, or crazy rhythm, but at the same time, it's... Um, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great art to be able to, to edit yourself while you write, to, to narrow, narrow, I guess the point is you narrow the story down to the, to, the, to the bare minimum, you know, when you're writing for a pop music, you know. All the art, it's just concentrated, you know, whereas with jazz, I could be free to, um, you know, if I want to use a, a, a complex chord, I've got all the freedom to do it. I'm not worried about record sales either. What are you working on right now? Right now, I'm, um, I'm hosting concerts at Disney Hall with the LA Philharmonic. It's called Jazz Meets the Orchestra. And uh, for the next three weeks, we're doing, we're doing performances uh, explaining what the difference between a, a jazz band and an orchestra. Uh, so I'll be playing some of my songs there, and some um, Leonard Bernstein, some Dvorak. That's where you can find me. That's an amazing lineup. Do you, do you think that um, there's an element of education that's sort of in, inherent in the mission of any jazz musician? I think we all need, all artists, all kinds of songwriters, it doesn't matter what genre, need to be more involved in education, music education, because um, schools aren't funding this anymore. And whether these kids grew up to be musicians or not, when they have an early influence on their life, and they, and they know what it takes to make music, they're more likely to buy CDs and respect art and know that it's not just something that falls out of the sky. Do you think ASCAP can be involved in, sure. in that mission? I think they should be, yeah. Because, uh, you know, um, when I was growing up, there was arts in the school. But after the, in the 80s, when the Proposition came on, Proposition 13 spread around the land, arts, visual art, painting, uh, choir, music, all got slashed. So kids, those, that generation has no, uh, there's no roots there on, on what, what it really takes to, to make music. And it, I think, you know, when, you, when you're in the band, playing clarinet in the band or singing in the choir, you get a, you get a taste of what it, what it takes to, to make music and be part of a team, you know. Especially if you're not a jock, you can be in the band and be a band geek, you know. And then you carry that, you carry that appreciation with you your whole life. You know, maybe later on you become a, you start making money as a subscriber for Lincoln Center, or you know, you support ballet, or you know, you continue to support you know, great songwriting. You know? And uh, I think that helps everybody.